Not afraid of a bad supporting male character, only afraid if he's handsome. He wants to snatch the throne. He wants to steal even his cousin's corner. Who doesn't love a beautiful woman? Who made him a pervert? But he doesn't know the girl has reincarnated. She's only interested in marrying her monster husband. The man stares at Shalia, dancing the opening dance with her brother. She's even more alluring than the rumors say. Rumors are indeed unreliable. Duke Leitenheim loves his sister so much. If he could marry her, not only would he get a beauty, but also the support of one of the three great leaders of the South. He could have both power and beauty. What a meticulous calculation. When the dance was halfway through, her brother had to socialize, leaving Shalia alone. This was exactly what Shalia wanted. She wanted to find Kaldi. She knew he must be hiding in some corner. Because her melancholic husband doesn't like bustle. Shalia didn't expect to meet a drunken fool. This man also recognized Shalia. Laughing in a way that was quite infuriating. Shalia was a bit afraid of him. Because in her past life, this man had insulted her at the ball. Making her the laughingstock of the capital. Shalia didn't want to engage with him too much. But the man wouldn't let her go. Grabbing Shalia's hand, he started to get fresh. Even saying the night was beautiful. Shalia disgustedly pushed him away. This action angered the stubborn Shumar. He felt insulted. Cursed Shalia for acting high and mighty. Because having played the sycophant for so long, he had become perverted. Thinking Shalia should kiss him as compensation for not inviting him to dance. But no one expected. Their quarreling would attract Kaldi's attention. Seeing him becoming more and more shameless, Shalia brought up her brother's name. But this man still dared to take advantage of her. Thinking that she, being an illegitimate daughter, could be defiled by him and what would it matter? Just as Shalia was about to call someone, a figure appeared behind her. Lady. Hearing this familiar voice, Shalia turned around sharply, her heart thumping wildly, her eyes sparkling with excitement. It was her husband Kaldi. His voice was calm but authoritative. Hasn't the lady already refused you? Didn't you understand? He is a deeply affectionate and gentle monster. The only legitimate son of the empire. But trained by the emperor to be a demon on the battlefield. Life so short, living only until thirty years old. Yet he doesn't know. That his wife from his previous life has been reborn. Shalia covers her mouth in shock, unable to speak. Finally finding her husband. The sleazy man ignored at the side is fuming. His good time interrupted, shouting about teaching cattle a lesson. Emphasizing repeatedly that he's a southern noble. With poor eyesight, he assumes cattle is just a knight. Shalia mourns for him in her heart. Cattle rarely attends public events. Apparently, Shumar doesn't recognize him. The sleazy man boasts about his family. Cattle's eyes turn icy. Word by word, he says to him. You keep emphasizing you are a southern noble. You are from Count Shumaher's residence, aren't you? I'll spare you this time. Since you always decide a person's worth by their status. I will oblige you this once. Shumar finally senses something wrong. The man before him has an aura that frightens him. However, Cattle's next words. Make him almost wish for death. You dare to insult the southern leader. The duke's daughter of Leighton Hyam among the three great lords. And never show the slightest respect to the legitimate heir. Of the Adrita Empire, the Grand Duke. Obviously, with his dim-witted mind. He hasn't realized who the Grand Duke of Austria is. But when he hears, Prince. He recalls the monster nurtured by the royal family. Caldeus Eprand. Cattle, with hands on his chest. Calmly asks him how he'll atone. The powerful aura from the man. Makes Shalia's eyes gleam with admiration. Shumar, who was just now so arrogant. Now cowers like a little mouse. What she didn't expect was. Shumar had the nerve to ask her to plead for him. Why should she help? Not taking the opportunity to trample him was already being kind. Fools will be fools. Instead of apologizing, he's yelling at a girl. Cattle grabs his wrist. And breaks his hand with a twist. A light punishment for him. If there were no girls present. He would have ruined more than just a hand. Cattle is annoyed by his wailing. Even a domestic pig wouldn't whine like you. This reminds Shalia of the scene. When she first met Cattle in her previous life. He was cold and stern, but warmer and kinder than anyone. Cattle sees Shalia looking at him. As a cat looks at dried fish. Wishing to stick to him. And indeed, she does just that. Hearing Cattle say he'll take her home. Shalia excitedly clings to his arm. The soft, fragrant girl leaning in. 
makes cattle blush. The two walk hand in hand. Just like their past lives. Shalia's heart beats rapidly. No one knows how much she misses cattle. When they enter the banquet hall, everyone is astonished. Speculating if they are in a romantic relationship. Shalia's mind is racing. Thinking about how to ask him for their next meeting. When she finally finds an excuse about laundry. Straightforward cattle says it's not necessary. It's not even dirty, no need for such trouble. Shalia wants to cry. Knowing the situation would arise. Cattle retrieves his cloak, preparing to leave. Shalia, in her urgency, loudly calls out Cattle's name. However, the noisy banquet suddenly falls silent. It turns out Cattle is an intimate name used between lovers. And Shalia accidentally calls it out in her excitement. Not just her, but Cattle is even more shocked. Choked by the affectionate name. Almost unable to catch his breath. Shalia feels she has lost all face. Blushing, she follows Cattle, apologizing. Cattle says it's okay. Hearing this, Shalia instantly revives. Even inviting him to dance with her.